all this because of a woman. Happily, he was upset. She did try and take all his money. Are you flipping mad or something? I bet Jim had loved Gwen to be sat on top of that. I set fire to the stop in the middle of the street. If that isn't a police matter, I don't know what is. Never a dull moment on this street, is there? It's better than watching the telly. Yeah. Maybe we should knock on a few doors, check everyone's OK. Good idea. Very public spirited of you. I wish someone had told me we were having a barbecue. I'd have brought some sausages. <laughs> right, come on, you lot. Back inside. There's no else to see you. Come on. That's a good idea. We'll have a drink. Emily? It's a lot smaller than Wheeler's, <laughs> but we're going places here, you know. All right, come on then, let's get on with it. Mike, this is Karen. She's good. We're very lucky to have her. She's already given you the big build-up, Karen, but I'd like to see what you can do for myself, if you don't mind. No problem, Mr Baldwin. If you want to see me sew, I'll sew. Looks like Lady Muck reckons she's going to be doing all iron and firing again. Hey, she's really fast. They're taking on a new machine. It's probably because they're planning on giving one of us a sack. Really? I smell redundancy coming. It's like a plague. Starts with just the one, and before you know it, the old factory's gone belly up. Will you shut up? They're taking on new workers because we've got new orders. That's right. We're going to be busier than ever. Looks like things are only going up. Well, you know what they say what goes up. <coughs> you all do. When can you start? Whenever you want. Today? Yeah. Welcome to Underworld. Let's hope you sell like that when no one's looking. I want to run you through that Johnson order. Right, the rest of you? Come on, let's get back to work. Come on. Hiya. Hiya. Starting today, then? That's right. I'm Karen. Oh, hello, Karen. I'm Hayley. Um, this is Janice, uh, Bobby Hi, and Ed. Edna. No. So you got mates, Will Linda, then? I was at Wheeler's with her. That's right. Close, were you? We were mates. But she got your job here. <laughs> no, I got the job because I'm good. As for Linda, she's all right. But I won't turn me back on her in a dark alley, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. Don't worry, Karen, love. You're going to fit in here. Hey, Karen, did Baldwin say out about planning Edna, to sack? What did I tell you? Button it. Oh, cheers. Hey, uh, Gina, I just wanted to say thanks a lot for keeping stum about me and Linda. We really appreciate it, yeah? Yeah, I bet you do. Hiya. Hi. Um, I'm going to need some more driving lessons. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've just had my date through for my test. Mm. And I'm not going to fail. I'm going to pass first time. Right. Well, you're going to need a lot of intensive tuition, then. <laughs> so, what do you reckon? It's all right. You seem to have sorted yourself a cushy number. Hey, I work harder now than I ever did behind that machine. Hey, when you phoned me, you never said you and the boss were. Well, how should I put it? Carefully. Don't forget, I got you this job. I can just as easily take it away. Hey, and if that's a threat, then I'm out of here. I'm not having you lording it over me. Come back, you. I thought you had a sense of humour. Yeah. Well, you having the power to sack me is not a joke. I haven't. I was only messing. Nenny Road, Mike can see you good. And he's not stupid. He might worship the ground I walk on, but he wouldn't sack you on my say so, even if I asked him nicely. So, what's the story with you and Mike? Complicated. Well, why don't that surprise me? About the rest of the Sykes clan, I mean, what do they think to little Linda's new boyfriend? Fiance, if you don't mind. And they don't know. And they're not going to know, so long as Blabbermouth keeps a trap shut. My lips are sealed. They better be. I mean it, Kaz. Uh, just wondering. Are you? Are you? Could I have a word? Is it important? Cos, uh, we're catching up on old times. Uh, no, not really. Can wait till tomorrow. See ya. Yeah. Now. He's a bit of all right. If you like him like that. It's the boss's son. That's exactly how I like them. Hey, if I copped off with him and you married Mike, you'd be my mother-in-law. No, oh, what a lovely idea. Let's do it. I think I'm going to enjoy working here. <laughs>
Ah, what you gonna have a pint? Yeah, go on then, why not? Pint of lager, please. Come here. Here, you seen that new boat, Karen? <laughs> she looks a good one. Oh, yeah. You then did us proud there. I wonder if she could poach some more birds off wheelers. I could do replacing our duffins. <laughs> you got a pint of lager and a nice scotch stuff. Yeah, darling. Keep the change. Oh, thank you very much. You don't. Cheers, Dad. Cheers. Just remember, you promised all the other girls you were going to keep Linda away from the workforce. Yeah, not now, not now. Work is over. Mm. Why, yeah, uh, why don't you tell me about your love life? What love life, sis? Well, you kick the Battersby bird into touch. You must have your eye on someone. Oh, no, give over. No, no, I'm resting for a bit. I got there, so it was a wasted morning. Yeah, well, we all have days like that, don't we? Yeah, but today of all days. Why? What's so special about today? Nothing. Hey, Linda. Happy birthday. <gasps> Many happy returns. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Linda. Well, we've got your cards. Oh, oh, you shouldn't tell. There's a one there from me. Oh, and uh, I got you these. Oh. Oh, thanks, Karen. They're my favourites. They're from her, though. We didn't have a wait round, right? Well, at least you're remembered, which is more than I can say for some. Has Baldwin forgot? Either that or he's cracking on, he forgot. Do you think so? Yeah. It's the oldest trick in book, isn't it? <laughs> hey, you haven't really forgotten about Linda's birthday, have you? Why does she think I have? Well, she did, but now she thinks you're just playing games. Oh, damn it. I'll have to think of something to throw her off the scent. So you are playing games? Yeah. But I don't want her to know that, do I? Well, I don't get you. Well, if she thinks I'm planning a surprise, it won't be a surprise, will it? This calls for uh, a double bluff. Yeah, right. What are you having, then? I'll get them in. No, I'll get them in. It's the least I can do. Happy birthday, sweetheart. I'm sorry I forgot. Oh, it's all right, Mike. I've never been that big on birthdays. Just completely slipped my mind. Oh, oh, thanks, Mike. It's lovely, yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, it's lovely. It's my favourite. Oh, good. Right, what you having? Is that it? Yeah. Perfume. Why? What were you expecting? Well, nothing. I just thought that... Well, it's not your 30th or anything like that, is you it? You know it isn't. What's that call cool for that? What are you having, lager? Bitter. Thanks, Xavier. I'm May. Orange juice. Oh, better make a list, then. I'll give you a hand. <laughs> Excuse me. Are you up to something? I am, and you're going to help me. How am I now? By five o'clock, you've got to make sure that Linda's out of that factory and in here. She mustn't be anywhere near that factory. What are you up to? You'll see. Cheers. Don't see why we can't go through these figures in the office. Well, there's less distractions. It's quiet, really. What are you up to? Nothing. But I am glad of the chance to get you on your own for a bit. Why? Well, I think it's about time we laid our cards out on the table, don't you? Oh, Mike, don't get heavy with me. Not today, not on my birthday. But this is heavy. You know how I feel about you, Linda. Hey, what you doing in here? We're just having a drink. Oh, no, you're not. It's only five o'clock. I've had three people on the phone asking for you. Yeah, yeah, all right. I'll be over in a minute. No, no. Now, come on. Chop, chop. And you. Come on. Out. Slave driver, Mike Baldwin. Do you know that? And you are the easiest person in the world to wind up. Happy birthday, sweetheart. <gasps> oh, my God! Is this car cool or what? I was expecting a bracelet and a gal in a bubble bath, but this is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. I know they go on about blokes and the motors all the time, but I've got to admit, this is a bit of a turn on, isn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't know. Oh, cheer up, Mark. You've had a face like a bag of spanners all morning. Me? You hardly said a word last night at Delphine's. No? 
But maybe I should have been singing and dancing all night instead, eh? Watching you and my dad all over each other. You are? But what did you expect exactly? No, I'm sorry, Mike. Can you just sit over there while your son gives me his little present instead? Grow up. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Let's not have a row, eh? Come on, my round. And uh, just a tonic water for the driver anyway, if you please. Look at this car, Linda. How am I supposed to compete with this? Well, if you don't know that by now. Besides, it's no contest. Do you think I'd have let things get to this stage if I didn't care about you? Please don't spoil everything. We may as well go home if it's going to be like this all afternoon. Well, suit yourself. You're driving. Here. What's this? It's your little present. Well, why give it to me now? Why not before? Oh, because it would look great next to the car, that, wouldn't it? Gorgeous, I love it. Thanks. Yeah, well. You shouldn't have spent this much money, though. You didn't say that to my dad, did you? Don't begrudge at me now you've given it to me. That's not fair. This means as much to me as anything I've been given, or will ever get given. And it's cost you just as much money as your dad buying that car, if you think about how much money he's got in comparison. But I can't write that off for tax. You what? Well, he was going to have to buy you a car anyway, wasn't he? If you're going to start repping properly. I'll well, see it like that if you want to. But I'm prepared to give your dad more credit. So should you. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It's just how all this makes me feel. He buys you a company car for your birthday and you're lapping it up. I mean, what's in it for me? It's like, whatever I do, it's never going to be good enough for you. Of course it is. How many times do I have to tell you? Well, all right. It's never going to be enough for me. So you think we'll be better off in here then, do you? Yeah, well, I had to get out of that last bar. It reminds me of somewhere you go with my dad. I thought you wanted quiet conversation. I want you to realise that I have got a stake in what's going on here. So get me another tonic water and I'll see if I can find him a table. Can you stop fobbing me off? I love you, Linda. How many times do I have to tell you that? I need to know how you feel about me. Honestly. It's too busy in here, man. You're doing it again. Mark? Marco Polo. I nearly didn't recognise you. Craig, what are you doing here? I thought they'd locked you up. <laughs> yeah, right. Last time I saw you, you were sparked out on that beach in Goa. With that Christina bird painting your toenails. <laughs> uh, Craig. This is Linda. He's me, Craig. Enchanted. Um, I'm glad I bumped into you, pal. I'm in a slightly right. desperate lack of right. dossing facility situation. You know what I mean. <laughs> I tell you what, I'll go and get the drinks and leave you two explorers to relive your adventures. Tasty, mate. Very impressed. Yeah, it's uh, my dad's fiance. Even better. Cheers. Hey, up, Dickens. How's the book coming on, then? Oh, why don't you buy one and find out? Oh, I've got better things to waste me money on. Yeah, so everybody can see. You know, your drive's a wasted on me, Baldwin. And the only time you'll ever spend working on your first book is trying to finish reading it. <laughs> the way it works, Craig, is that Mark keeps Linda happy in the new car, which means I can get around him. Excellent. Mine's a bitter. No, no, I mean golf, son. Golf first. She hates it. I'll, I'll go on, then. Suppose I'll get him in again. Cheers, Dad. Well, you have been working. Listen, why don't we leave these two to pick up a couple of birds or whatever they do, and uh, we'll go out and eat. I'll call a cabbie. Eh? Whatever, yeah. You don't want us hanging around while you relive your shady past, do you? You're a top man, Mr B, and you must be doing something right, eh, hey, Linda? I just hope I'm doing half as well at your age. Poor 
Do you remember her? No, not really. No. I'm not surprised. You kept passing out on that dodgy wine. Anyway, she blew me out. <sighs> what is up with you, Mark? You're like an accident waiting to happen. Oh, nothing. I'm just a bit spaced out, that's all. You've always been spaced out. Listen, uh, would you rather I'd crash somewhere else? I can. I've got an auntie that lives in Oldham. She's a, a bit puddled, but no, sure. No, you're right, mate, honestly. No, it's no problem. Right, excellent. I'd best nip out for a few beers then, Anta. <clears throat> I tell you what, if that Linda was my mother-in-law, she could suck me in any time. Yeah, all right, mate, all right. Whatever, no offence, like. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, Craig. Uh, yeah, come on then, let's get some beers and you can tell me how everyone's getting on in Thailand without me. Now we're talking, mate, now we're really talking. <laughs> come on. Any volume, as long as you give us notice. Well, you've got us brochure. And you've got my mobile number, haven't you? Yeah. I know what I was meaning to ask you. Uh, you must be close to the Craven Arms, are you? Is it as good as they say it is? Oh, we've, we've been meaning to give it a go. I'll be careful, you. I'll keep you to that. <laughs> yeah, OK, Mr Lyons. Thanks very much. I'll see you soon. Bye. Well? Tom Lyons. You must weigh 20 stone. Yeah, I do know who Tom Lyons is. You have to pump the tyres up in your car if you give him a lift. I asked you a question last night. Not now, Mark. I'm busy. What's so busy that you drag out a conversation with a client just to avoid me? You have to butter people up. First rule of selling. I want an answer, Linda. It's not the right place. Yeah, well, it never is lately. Wrong time, wrong place. There's always some excuse. I hope this flaming woman's in now. I'm not going to give up, you know. I'm going to keep on asking you until you tell me how you feel about me. Don Thompson. Linda Sykes, Underworld. Yep, I'll hold. I'm going to go over to the Rovers, get a head start on that rubble. I hope you're not going to be there. A face like that would put me off me hot pot. Cheer up, Mark, will you? Yeah, well, it's hard when you won't even speak to me. I don't know what you're moaning about. We still have a good time, don't we? Well, we do, yeah. When you feel like it. I have to be careful, you know that. So what's going to happen in three months' time, eh? After you've married my dad? Just have to see, won't we? You're going to have to be even more careful. You might not even want to see me. You might not want to see me. It's a free country. I'm not sure I believe all this. All what? Well, how you've been talking to me lately. All flip like you don't give a damn. I never said that. I think you're covering up because you can't handle it. And deep down, you're just as freaked out as I am. I'm right, aren't I? I'm marrying Mike. I like seeing you, Mark. And I care about you. And as for the future, I don't know. But Mike will always come first. And that's what you really want. It's really, really what I want. Can I go for my dinner now? You know last night in that bar when you found me with Linda? And you thought you were interrupting something. Yeah? Yeah, well, you were. No, I get it. You fancy her. Well, yeah. I'm not surprised. She's tasty. No wonder you've been in a weird mood. Does she know? Oh, she knows, all right. We're having an affair. What? You're sleeping with your dad's girlfriend? Fiancé. Stepmother-to-be. <sighs> And now I can see why you don't need any more excitement. How long's that been going on? Since Christmas. What, and she still wants to marry him? <sighs> You're sailing close to the wind there, mate. <laughs> well, Craig, it's not funny. No, I know I don't suppose it is. But what are you going to do? Will you tell me? <sighs> so who started it? Well, we both did, really. New Year's Eve both drunk. What, and it's just gone on? Yeah. Well, we've kept trying to stop it, but it never lasts. So, once you've crossed that bridge, it's hard to go back. Yeah, but your own dad? Tell me about it. It's not something you've got against him, is it? In no way. I really get on with him. I enjoy working with him. It's just... Oh, 
Fallen for his girlfriend. Do you love her? I do, yeah. Does she love you? She won't give me a straight answer. I've told her how I feel. I've even asked her to leave my dad, but she won't. She never wants to talk about it. That's what I was trying to pin her down on last night. I'm sorry. Hey, no, you want to know. Sometimes I really think she loves me. And then other times it's just like I'm a bit on the side. I don't really know where I am. What a mess. I wish I'd never come back to Weatherfield. Listen, do you want my advice? Go on. You're playing with fire. Oh, like I didn't know that. Yeah, but you can't go on like this. He's gonna find out sooner or later. And even if she leaves him for your mark, where does that leave you and him? There's no future in it, unless you never want to see your dad again. What are you saying? I'm saying you've got to cut your losses and get out. Well, like I told you, we've tried, but it never seems to work. Then you've got to move away from here, as far as you can. It'll blow up in your face otherwise. You've got to do it, and fast. I'm back in Thailand, and you're off for another odd day at that sweatshop. Well, yeah, I will. And now you can look your old fella in the face when all the time you're giving his girlfriend one. <laughs> do my head in. It's not how I want it, Craig. I don't like it. But I am serious about Linda. That's what you don't understand. Mark, she's years older than you. Well, that doesn't matter. I'm in love with her. Look, you're earning plenty of money. You're driving rounds in a big car. You could have any girl that you want. So get Linda out of your mind. How am I going to do that? I'm working with her every day. Talking to her. Standing close to her. Oh, mate, what am I going to do? Search me. But I do know this. You're in. Is that it, Mike? Yeah, take one yourself. Huh? Right, thank you. Where did Mark shoot off to then? I don't know. Maybe he went to see his mate. Do you think he's got something on his mind? How should I know? Well, he's been ever so moody the last day or two. He hasn't said anything to you then? No. He seems fine to me, Mike. Oh, mate, it's driving me mad. Working with Linda and the old man. Walking into that office and seeing those two together. Yeah, it must be tough. This morning, right? The old man, he did something. Patted her, yeah. you know, as she walked past. I felt like hitting him. Look at you, all this hassle and aggro. You should be having a ball at this time of your life, Mark. Not all this trouble. I know. I know that. But what can I do? You can get out of your dad's life, yeah? And Linda's. And leave him to it. Walk away, Mark. And fast. One problem with just walking away. Like I told you. I'm in love with her. What about your dad? I mean, suppose you and Linda did get together. What's that gonna do to him? I've thought about that a lot. I don't suppose you two could survive it. He'd never forgive you for that, Mark. I know. I know. What am I gonna do? Like I said, you can't win. <laughs> Listen, I'm leaving for Bangkok on Friday. Why don't you come with me? Solve your problems, Mark, by leaving them behind you. That will cheer up, sunshine. You've been about as much fun as a visit to a chest clinic all day. Give over morning, Em. Let's sit down. There you are, my love. Keep the change. Thank you. Oh. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi, Jen. How's it going, son? Yes. Always pleased to do a bit of business for you. I need to talk to you, Linda. OK. Dad's out tomorrow morning. No, tonight. I mean, like, now. What's the problem? Well, we can't talk here, can we? Just come over to the flat as soon as you can, OK? Oh, just like that? Chaz, the old, old customer of mine. Looks like there might be a nice little order there. Huh. Cheers. Well, business is great. And the old love life's not so bad either. Right, I'm off. You going? What's up? You having women trouble or something? Uh, yeah, something like that. Well, treat them mean. It's the only way. <laughs> that explains it. Girly trouble. Who's he seeing now, anyway? I don't know, do I? I'm not his flaming nanny. What's this all about? Oh. Oh, well. I'll get out your way. He knows, don't he? I can tell. You've told him about me and you. Yeah. Oh, brilliant, Mark. It was bad enough Gina knowing. Who's your mate gonna tell? Nobody. Whatever you've got to say, say it quickly. I told your dad I'd be back in a few minutes. He's gonna start wondering. 
Yeah, and he's gonna go on wandering until someone puts him straight. Which is bound to be sometime soon. Who are you worried about? Gina? Because there's no problem there. I can keep her quiet. I'm not thinking about Gina. I'm talking about you telling him. Or both of us. I think that it's about time that we did. I'm sick of all the sneaking around that we do. That's the way it has to be. But you know you like being with me. Yes, yeah, so you like being with me. You seem to manage, Mark. I won't go on meeting you in secret, on the side. And I don't like making a fool of my father. I'm going, me. This is a waste of time. Mark, don't you realise what would happen if we told Mike? I'd be kicked out. You'd be kicked out. Both out of a job. And out of a lot of things I've never had before. And I happen to like having them. Yeah, but none of that matters. Not really. Oh, get real, Mark. I am going. And we're carrying on just like we are. No, we're not. Craig's leaving for Thailand on Friday. Yes, so? I'm thinking about going with him. You should. A couple of weeks holiday, do you good, calm you down a bit. If I go, I'm not coming back. I won't go on the way we have been. If I can't be with you out in the open, then that's it. I'm sorry, it's over. Oh, come on. I mean it, you've got to make your mind up. You've got to choose who you want to be with. Him or me. You can't have both. I've got to drive my dad to Leeds. I was just wondering what time you were leaving tonight. The plane takes off a shipple at midnight. You going to Amsterdam first? Yeah, I couldn't get a direct flight to Bangkok from here. Amsterdam, you know, I thought, meet with a few mates. Why? I'm going to come with you. What? Well, I've decided. She's never going to leave him, and I'm not waiting around here for favours. Have you told her? No, I haven't yet. What about your dad? No, I've written him a letter. What? Telling him about you and Linda? No, 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 I couldn't do that. No, just explaining that I had to get away. I was feeling trapped. What do you think he'll do? I don't know. But anyway, I'll be coming with you on that plane. <laughs> you going, then? Yeah, when he comes back. Whose is this? <sighs> He's coming with me. To Bangkok? Is he serious? And for what it's worth, I think he's doing the right thing. Been persuading him, have you? I told him what I thought. I bet you did. Oh, come on, Linda, he's a big boy. He can make his own decisions. I have to speak to him. He's on his mobile. I meant alone. Hmm. Stay here if you want, but I don't think you'll change his mind. Tell him I'm in the Rovers. Tell him I have to speak to him. Whatever you say. I mean it, this is important. As soon as he gets back, I have to see him. I'll tell him. Thank you. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't be able to resist. What's going on? No, you don't want to do anything with me. Just get us a large vodka, will you? You know right, No. And I don't think I can stay here. Come on. Yeah, it's Mark. He's going. Yeah. Mark. So you say he's leaving? Tonight. He's going to Bangkok with Craig. So what happened? Has Mike found out? No, nothing like that. Are you going with him? He hasn't asked me. He hasn't even told me he's going yet. I found out from his mate. Do you want to go with him? I don't want to lose him. You love him, don't you? Yeah, I do. But it's not that simple, is it? I want to be with him. But I have so many feelings for Mike. The truth is, I don't want to lose either of them. Sounds like you've got yourself into a right mess. It doesn't have to be. But when's wedding? September. And you still want to go through with it? Listen, my family are a nightmare. A mess. I've come from nothing to where I am now. If I lose Mike, I lose everything. My job, my home, my future. Everything I've worked for. So let Mark go? If he goes, he's not coming back. Seems like it might be a good thing. Is it? So go with him then. But what about all this? You've got the rest of your life for all this. For settling down. I'd miss him so much. He doesn't understand. So you know what to do then, don't you? I suppose I do, yeah. Listen, I said that. I'd meet him in the bar, so I best go through it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> oh, 
See the way I handled old Penny, by the way? Straight from the shoulder. No messing, no flack. Either that's a deal or no deal. Do you want a drink? No, I'd better not. I'm in the car. Oh, I've had a great day. First Burgesson, then Penny with her. Two coups in one day. Now that, that is the way to run a business, son. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. I've really enjoyed myself today. Yeah, well, I can see that. Well, it's been a bit of a buzz, hasn't it? First a business, and I've had time to spend with you. Oh, oh, and we had a great lunch, didn't we, eh? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, fabulous little place, that is. Great wine. Do you know, that's one of the best-kept secrets of the Pennines. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. You know, you made me a very happy man coming back here. Settling in. Taking an interest in the business. Yeah, well, I've enjoyed myself. Good. Because I want to tell you, you mean a, a hell of a lot to me. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, I do. And you mean a lot to me as well. I don't want you ever to forget that. Come on. Carry on like this and I'll be in tears. You okay? Nah, it's just, um, I've got a bit of a headache. Had it on and off all day. <coughs> Getting worn out. Get an old son. That's too much good living. There's no such thing as too much good living. <laughs> Here, you know, uh, you don't know what happened to Linda, do you? Not got a clue. <laughs> oh, I know. Knowing her, she's probably gone to the rover to see that stripper. <laughs> don't worry, she'll come back. Do you know what? I think I'll uh, just go and have a nice long soak and hot bath. Yeah, OK. Well, I'll see you later. You take it easy. Tell you I'd be in pub, did I? Yeah, he did. So why didn't you come? Well, I've had loads to do. And anyway, what's the point, eh? Why didn't you tell me you were going? I did. Not definitely. I thought you were bluffing. Well, I'm not. Look, Linda, I've made my mind up. Please don't make this any worse for me. I've no intention of doing that. So why are you here? Because I love you. Linda. I mean it, Mark. I love you. And I don't want to lose you. So I've decided I'm going to tell Mike. Going to? Yeah, I will. I'll tell him. When? As soon as I get back. OK. So don't go, because I'll be back. The plane leaves Manchester for Schiphol at midnight. If I haven't heard from you by 10 o'clock, I'm on my way to the airport. I promise. I'll be back. I love you. I'll push the keys through the shop letterbox. Hey, was that the door? You're hearing things, mate. She's not coming, you know. 
Yeah, but it's only just ten o'clock. Yeah, but she wouldn't leave it till the last minute. Come on, plane to catch. <laughs> leave it. She'll only try to persuade you to give her another chance. String you along again? It's Dad. So it's either your dad or she's with him. Give it here. Well, hold on, I just want to... You can't have them switched on on planes anyway. Come on. What the hell's going on? What's up? Mark, that's what's up. For crying out loud, Linda. What's he said? Mike, I didn't want you to find out like this. I was going to tell you. What, you, you, he'd gone? Flaming hell, Linda. Why didn't you say something to me? He asked me not to. I didn't think he'd go through with it. He what? After all I'd done for him, gave him everything on a plate and you knew... He just couldn't face you, that's all. Couldn't face me? He's been here telling me how much he loved me. All that garbage. And why now? I mean, is it something I've done? Found the flat. No reply. What about his mobile? Oh, it's switched off. I think I'll join you. You know, I really love that kid, Linda. I, I just can't believe he's done this to me. Me neither. How the hell didn't you tell me what was going on? I told you, I thought it was all talk. <laughs> you never really liked him, did you? Not deep down. You didn't like the idea of him and me being so close, did you? You're being ridiculous. The world doesn't revolve around you, you know. There's things you don't even know about. Oh, yeah, like what? Well, come on, then. If you know something, tell me. Look, Mike, I don't even know where to start. What's up? Mike? Oh, it's just indigestion. I've had it on and off all day. No, I'm calling an ambulance. No, don't. No, don't. It's just a shock. I'll, I'll, I'll be all right. I could just have five minutes. Mike, don't do this to me. Um, ambulance, please. Oh. Now. You sure it was a heart attack? I mean, I'm not overweight or anything, am I? Do you smoke? No. Well, I have the occasional cigar, but that's not like cigarettes, is it? The odd cigar after a meal or regular? Oh, I get plenty of exercise. I play golf once or twice a week. Drink? No. Oh, well, I have the odd whiskey, you know, but that's like medicine, isn't it? My old man used to put it in his tea. He used to call it his little pick-me-up. And your father's how old? Well, he's been dead quite a few years now. Quite. Mr Baldwin, you must look after yourself a little better. You run your own business, you say? Yeah, that's right. Me and uh, my son. But he's having a break. You have the break. Let him take the helm. Is everything all right? Um, absolutely. Just having a word with your father about his lifestyle. I'm not his daughter. I'm his fiance. Oh. I see. Don't think it was a heart attack. Mike, I was there, remember? You nearly died. They overreact. Well, anyway, the doctor said we've got to look at it as an early warning. They said the cigars and the whiskey have got to go. <laughs> They've been telling me that for years. Did you get in touch with Mark? No. But why not? He's got to know. Phone up the airport, find out what plane he got on. Tell him it's an emergency. Just calm down, will you? I have tried to get hold of him. His phone switched off. Yeah, well, he's out of range. I mean, he could be anywhere. Where was it he said he was going? Thailand? I mean, that's the other side of the world. Mike, the doctor said you've got to rest. Take it easy. Don't worry about Mark anymore. I'll do the worrying for both of us. Hello? At last. It's me. Where are you? I'm in Amsterdam. What the hell are you doing in Amsterdam? Well, I'm seeing a few mates before we go on to Thailand. Listen, you've got to come home. Linda, you blew it. You made your decision. Your dad needs you. Oh, yeah? He's had a heart attack. 
That is not something to joke about. I'm not. He's in intensive care. Serious, Mark. <laughs>